Hello and welcome to PPM6 TV. Today we'll be looking at what's missing from this new Audient ID44 USB interface. Audient have a long and distinguished history in the mixing desk manufacturing business. Dave Dearden, their chief designer, uh, was at DDA and before that uh, made mixing desks for uh, members of the Beatles, no less, so he ought to know what he's doing. But of late, the uh, Audient have been moving into the USB interface market. They've made several smaller models and uh, this is the latest and the greatest um, of their kit, the ID44. So what do you get for your £500? Well, and it's worth just pausing there to say £500 seems uh, quite reasonable when you think about the number of facilities that you are getting, as we shall see as we go through this review. So first and foremost, you get a very sturdy tin box and uh, all metal all the way around, kind of book uh, shaped with a, with, a, with a wrapped over front cover. And um, that feels sturdy enough, certainly, to come off your desktop and uh, go onto the road. So uh, uh, props to them for uh, good, good finish to start with. You've got four mic inputs and you can see um, one, two, three, four at the back. We'll talk about the differences between those two in a minute. But to dwell for a moment on the mic inputs, Audient uh, make much of the fact, and probably rightly so, that the same mic amps um, are in this that are in their big mixing desk. So Pete Townsend has got an Audient. He's got the same mic amps um, as you get in this. Now, um, there is a slight twist there because I noticed that on their rack mount, they've got a couple of rack mounted uh, models with eight mic amps in, you get a little bit more gain in some of them. You get 70 dB, whereas in these um, you get 60 dB, which is, um, of course, a, a lot of gain. Uh, but more importantly, probably, than the absolute amount of gain is how much noise you get. You know, in other words, how much of that 60 dB is usable. I reviewed a bit of kit recently where the, the, the mic gain uh, might only have been 50 dB, but the top end was just not usable of that because it was so noisy. These are very, very quiet uh, mic amps indeed. Um, Class A, they tell me, and I, and I take their word for it, and the same as in their other products, um, you'll have to take uh, their word for that, but they are quality bits of kit. And of course, you get four of them, which um, is enough to, to uh, make a good start on um, your band and you have some expandability which we'll talk about um, later. So um, you get uh, on each of the four channels you get um, uh, your gain pot, you get 48 volts phantom on a nice little toggle switch, um, you get a, a 10 dB pad and you get um, a, a low frequency cut. Now round the back um, these uh, inputs are all combi XLR and jack so you can, you've got a light, separate line input on those. Um, but the first two channels are distinguished by, by having fully balanced um, insert inputs and outputs. And that means you don't have to faff around with a, with a combi lead, which you, you, know, you do with a split on it for two XLRs or two jacks into a single uh, stereo unbalanced jack. These are fully balanced in and out. And that is really great, actually. You can, uh, you can add some external processing um, or whatever in there. Or you can go into the insert from your boutique mic amp and um, thereby bypassing the analog electronics uh, at, at the front end um, for, for to get the maximum goodness. Now, I've got, I don't own many what you might call boutique preamps, but um, I do have a Mindprint DTC, which is excellent. And I, I, I compared the Mindprint, I think when it was retailing was about, I don't know, 12 or 1500 quid for two channels. And I compared the mic amps uh, with these and well, I, I wouldn't be able to swear that I could tell the difference um, at all. And of course, you get four of them in here. There's no, um, you might notice there's no phase reverse switch on the hardware, but there is one um, in the Audient app that uh, you, you load when, when you're going to use that. So that's, that's, the, that's the mic inputs. Then you've got some um, LED, some LED bar graph there for levels, um, although each channel has a signal present and an overload um, LED embedded in it too. But uh, that, uh, that ladder of LEDs also refers to this uh, multifunction dial, which has the gain control for your, um, your speaker outputs on it. And so as you uh, adjust that, it will momentarily override the level to show you the position um, of the control. Um, so around the back, you've got uh, four uh, balanced outline outputs, and they're kind of arranged as a speaker pairs. So as I said, the, the, the gain control um, affects those as, as loudspeakers 
and there's it also has the option of alternative loudspeakers and there's some options in the software to adjust the the trim of that against your main loudspeaker it's quite a sophisticated setup and thank goodness they've got comprehensive monitoring stuff they've got some uh, keys down here which you can see um, with dim and cut on it and there's a talkback uh, button and there's some function keys that control mono and phase reverse and dim uh, functionality which can be set up in in the software and it really is very flexible you can have mono a which broadcasters love um, and uh, you can you can mono it to the center of the two speakers or left or right it's very very, very um, handy stuff and then finally you've got um, two uh, volume controls for your your headphones uh, two two separate headphone outputs and um, with individual volume controls and those are uh, separate mixes and that's important to 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 mention that all the all the outputs are separate mixes and controllable from within within the application so you can actually send different and different mixes to um, your artists or whatever um, that you're working with and and finally in terms of uh, the front panel I should have mentioned that earlier um, two DIs I haven't I haven't used these they make much of them in their literature that they're JFET whatever I, I'm sure they're good everything else on this is good so I, I have no reason to doubt that um, around the back you do have a um, uh, a word clock out and you also have um, uh, optical connectors, two, two banks of optical connectors in and out, and those can be uh, a toss link or SP diff, so, um, or ADAT, sorry, and that means you can uh, add an extra 16 channels of uh, mic amps if you're running at lower sample rates and if you're running at uh, 88 or, or, or 96, you'd be able to add eight extra channels to your um, ID44, and of course, Audient would love it if you they, they do rack uh, uh, one U rack mount eight eight channel um, input devices, so um, they'd be thrilled if you if you, if you went that route. But I'm sure you could plug anything into there. I've got an RME I could plug into there quite handily. So um, what's missing? Oh, hang on, one last thing. Um, it has an off switch. Apparently, that was a big deal. The other ones, maybe the smaller ones, don't have an off switch. I don't know. But uh, they, they do have an off switch uh, by popular request. Um, I think you want to switch it on, but uh, there we go. Um, there's also a USB-C connector. That's the main um, connector for your USB connectivity. And they do supply a USB-C lead in the box, which is handy because mostly we're probably expecting USB-B on, on a device like this. But the future undoubtedly is USB-C. And um, you've, you've got the ability, uh, ability to plug that in straight out of the box because they give you a lead. What's missing? Well, I, I mean, that's an interesting question. It, it's a 96K d device. It, it doesn't do um, 192. For me, that's not a big deal. Your mileage may vary, as the Americans like to say. Uh, there you are. It doesn't do 192K. So if you want 192K, then this is not the device for you. The, the headphone amps are really good. I, I have no complaint about their quality. Um, I, I have some difficult to drive headphones and I'd, I'd like to have a few more dB on the, on the output there, so no, note to self. Um, turning to the digital side, Audience have been hard at work on both hardware and software. On the hardware front, they've implemented what they're calling uh, dual converter technology. That means they've gone for an AKM converter on the analog to digital, while the output, the D2A, is covered by a Cirrus Logic chip. I took the ID44 down to my friends at Audio T here in Cardiff, and we had a quick listen in their dem room alongside uh, sort of commercial DACs just to see how it fared. And uh, we put it up against the kind of standard 500 quid project DAC, and I think the Audient comfortably held its own. Um, and given that that's the price of the Audient, you're getting an awful lot extra for your money. Um, on the software side, the, the new app is easy to use. You can hide various parts of the the, the screen, you know, it, it, to make to make it as simple as possible. And just the ability to have separate mixes on every output is a great boon indeed. There is an interesting function where if you, you can use the ID knob uh, as, a, as, a, as a scroll thing, if you hover over a scrolling option within Windows, I'm not sure uh, how useful that is for me, but in terms of controlling fades, that might be, that might be a big deal. Um, I know they have um, uh, digital input on optical. I would like to see uh, a coax input just because if you want to plug this into your hi-fi and use it as a DAC, that would just make it that little bit more flexible. 
Finally, the drivers, and uh, this is this is probably an issue for some people. Uh, no doubt, I think RME are the leaders in driver technology, USB driver technology up to now. I don't have an RME uh, USB interface to compare it with. However, Audient have been working hard on this. They, they've rewritten the drivers. There's new figures on the online for latency, and so check those out if if they're a big deal for you. So from the from the digital side. A lot of work has been put into this and it really does show. It's it's very reasonably priced. I'm clutching at straws really to say uh, what's missing. It would have been nice maybe to have uh, the, the inserts on all four channels, but you know, you're, you're, you're getting to the point where you're saying, well, it would be nice if everything was better than it is. And at 500 pounds, I think if you look into the market and say, I want really good quality mic amps and I want at least four of them, then you'll find that getting those at £500 in the UK market is, is a real challenge. So I think Audient have a winner here. What's missing from it? Nothing very much. Oh, yes, I, of course, I would like an IEC mains inlet rather than the external power supply, but that's just like a constant refrain of modern life, and we shouldn't be too churlish about that. So let me let me show you. I have a good look at that. That's the Audient ID44. In the UK, it's about 500 quid, and I think it's a bargain. Thanks for watching at PPM6 TV. Check out my other reviews on there now. Bye for now.